Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for joining me today and happy new year to all of you. Uh, this was the last session from 2022 that I was playing in. And uh, this was a pretty long session, uh, a little over six hours. I made some interesting plays. I like your opinion on them. Just uh, go ahead and jot down your uh, ideas in the comments below. Also put up some goals that I'm setting for myself for 2023. Uh, tell me if you like them. And uh, other than that, sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. First hand of the day, I get 10-9 suited from the plus one position. There's a limper in front of me. I raced a 15. Ended up getting uh, three callers for the 15, including the big blind and the original limper. So we're going to go four ways to this flop with $61 in the center. Flop comes out pretty darn good. Comes 10 high with two diamonds. Even though I flopped the world with top pair and a flush draw, I'm going to have to bet this and kind of protect my hand because it is vulnerable to overcards. And I kind of want to get action from someone with a 10 with a weaker kicker or perhaps maybe second or third pair. That just is a non-believer. But it doesn't look like any of those hands are out there. All my opponents start to fold. And uh, we're going to take down this small pot. But it's the first pot of the day. And it's always nice to start off with a plus. There's one player that limps from plus one position. I'm in the low jack with a6 suited. I put in a raise to 15, trying to isolate him. We get the uh, button and the big blind to come along with us. And we go four ways to a flop of queen, six, four with two clubs. So a pretty decent flop. We got a second pair, good kicker, and the nut flush draw. It's checked over to me. I bet small for $15. Button folds. Big blind puts in the call, and so does the limper. Turn card comes as a three club, so we nail it right away. Don't have anything to worry about. Both players check to me. I'm going to bet small again here, trying to entice someone to put in a call. The big blind has a large stack. I kind of want him to make a play, but he folds out. The small blind, I'm pretty sure, has at least a queen, and he puts in the call rather quickly. River card comes as a six of hearts. No one likes seeing the board pair when they have a flush, but we have a six to back it up. My opponent doesn't have too much money left either. He only has like $41. I bet it after he checks and he quickly calls. And uh, I don't think he likes seeing the flush. He ends up mucking his hand and we take down another small pot. After a quick start, I went card dead for about an hour and a half. Didn't have really anything to play. Finally, I pick up ace jack offsuit in the small blind. There is a middle position open for 20. A player calls the 20. And another player on the button puts in the 20. And when it comes back around to me, ace jack, I would rather play it, you know, heads up or in fact have everyone fold would be ideal. I don't want to play it four ways out of position. So I decided to put a big squeeze on here and I made it 95. Now this is high variance, but I think it's a profitable play if you have the bankroll for it. Ideally, if the first player who opened folds, I think the others would fold also. But they ended up calling, which kind of brings a daisy chain of other people calling for $95. Maybe I should have made it bigger. I don't know. But I really thought $95 would work here with a $20 open. The button finally decides to close the action by putting in the call also. Now, with the stack sizes the way they are, I expect that if someone had a big pair, they would probably jam with it. If someone had something like ace-king or ace-queen, they would probably jam over my raise also. The flop comes out 5-5-4. Five, five, I already decided I was going to give up if the flop came like king-queen or queen-jack or, you know, any of those big cards that didn't connect really strongly with my hand. But a flop like 5-5-4 five, five, actually is very good for my particular hand. Now, the hands I'm likely up against are like king-queen, king-10, queen-10, queen-jack, jack-10, stuff like that. Maybe an occasional ace-jack to tie. Doubt there's any ace-queens. So by firing all in on this, which is about a pot size bet, I figure I can force out all those overcards. I'll maybe get someone to fold a medium-sized pocket pair like eights, nines, maybe even tens if they think I have a big pair. 
First player folds, second player shows their hand and folds, and the player on the button snap calls. And I said, you got a five? And he goes, yeah. And he, and he shows me king five of diamonds. So he was getting a good price to put in a call. It was a speculative call pre-flop. The flop was perfect for him. I'm going to be barreling on that. If he didn't have a five, I think everybody would have folded. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Added 500 to my stack. Picked up eight four spades in the big blind. Player open for 20, and they got two callers in front of me. So I decided to call. It's rather speculative, but, you know, that's the way it is. Flop comes out, queen, five, deuce with two spades. I check to initial aggressor. He bets for 20. Player on the button calls the 20, and so do I. So we're going three ways to a turn card off a of five of spades. Pretty good turn card. I make my flush. I check it. The initial aggressor now checks it, and the button checks it back. So most likely my hand is good here, but I'm not sure I can get too much value from it. River card comes as a 10 of clubs. I could fire out, but I felt something weird going on. So I decided to check it. It gets checked to the player on the button who bets 60 really quickly. I just don't like my hand. I feel like I'm running into it. I'm, it's hard to explain, but I can't fold it. So I put in the 60. Player behind me folds and the guy in the button shows five deuce offsuit for a full house. So the action's getting pretty good. Guys are calling races with five deuce and eight four suited. All right, two and a half hours in my session, down 600 bucks, but the pair of nines might make it all better. I ended up raising to 20 over a uh, limper, end up getting two players to put in the call. So we're gonna go three ways to this flop with $61 in the pot. Flop comes out, eight, eight, four, rainbow. Pretty good flop for my hand. Definitely going to continue. Want to charge over cards. I decided to go a little bit larger because like I haven't won a pot in a really long time. And I think people kind of sense that. And I think they're more willing to call with speculative hands. Anyway, I get one player to call me. Turn card comes is a, well, a nine. Player checks again, and I decided to bet this just because I don't, th if, they, if they didn't believe me, they're not going to believe me now, and I want to get value from it. But they quickly fold, so I, th I think I screwed that one up. Luckily, the poker guards gave me a second chance. I looked down at two nines again, and again, I end up raising. After someone limps in, I get two callers, and we're going to go to a flop again with 60 four dollars in the pot flop comes out nine nine deuce well i think i'm gonna have to check this one so i end up checking it it gets checked around turn card comes as a jack check to me again i decided to bet really small hoping somebody has a jack and luckily someone does have a jack and not only that they jam all in for 38 dollars how disappointing, finally picking up a big hand and playing against a short stack for $38. Needless to say, I put in the call, get the camera in position, and end up rolling over my cards before he had a chance to, just to give him some courtesy to let him know that he is uh, in deep trouble. He did end up showing that he had ace jack of hearts. So I didn't get a lot of action on my quads. But I decided maybe I'll limp with pocket fours from under the gun and see if I can get a multi-way pot and flop something big and get even that way. Anyway, we do end up getting a ton of people, actually seven of them, to see the flop for $3. It's almost like a $3 bomb pot. Flop comes out. Well, jack, seven, four. It's checked to me. I check it, hoping that someone has a jack, and maybe we'll bet a seven. Instead, it gets ends up getting checked all the way around, which is rather disappointing when you're trying to build a pot and there's only $21 in it and you have a very strong hand. Turn card comes as a jack of diamonds. Granted, if they had a jack, they probably would have bet. I decided to bet 10 whole dollars, half the pot, trying to get someone to come along with a flush draw, 
or perhaps some sort of straight draw. And for $10, I only get one player coming along. So the grand total is $41 in the pot, and the river card comes as a deuce of diamonds. Right about now, you're probably thinking, I think Doug lost his mind. Why is he showing me a $41 pot going to the river? I mean, come on, this is boring. What the heck's going to be going on here? And I go, well, just wait and see. So in my mind, I'm thinking that player just made a flush. And I don't think he's going to be folding. So I decided to overbet the pot. 2x. I make it 95. A little more than 2x. So I'm thinking that this guy's going to make a crying call for the $95. And this little teeny pot's going to end up being over a $200 pot. But uh, that's not what happened. What happened was kind of unexpected. He decided that calling was not the best option. Instead, he ended up putting in a raise and made it $200. Now, the reason this was so unexpected is because I thought I had a pretty good read on him, and my read was that he was super weak on the turn. I mean, I don't think he had a jack. I don't think he had pocket sevens or, or pocket jacks or anything like that. So I, I can't imagine him having a full house. And I'm not sure he would raise with anything less than a nut flush. So he would have to have the nut flush here. But right now, he seems more confident than that. I mean, it's like, Doug has the flush, and I'm going to nail him for another $105. So I'm going, can you really have pocket deuces here? And if so, can I get the rest of his stack? He only has another $100 behind, so it's not going to cost me too much if I'm wrong. But I sure like to squeeze a little extra value out of this little full house. And I think he either has a nut flush or a pocket deuces. So I jam. He snap calls. I roll over my pocket fours and he showed me pocket deuces. So he took a cheap card off and the reverse implied odds got him pretty good there. So I got a little extra value. Uh, usually don't squeeze that much value out of hands like this, but uh, it kind of feels good when you, when you do. So this next hand, I wasn't too sure whether I was going to put in the vlog or not, but I figured you guys are worth it. So this is going on the idea of knowing the hand you're playing and knowing why you're playing it. So I'm in the big blind here with pocket tens. A pretty good hand. A player opens for 21 after there's a $6 straddle. And what's different about this is he's in the process of racking up his chips and he's playing to his blind and then he's going to leave. And I think he is extremely conservative with the hands he plays. So I'm putting him on a very big pair at this time. He has a lot of chips, so I'm going to go set mine. But I don't want to be sucked into the reverse implied odds that my last opponent was if I miss this. So we end up having... Four-way action going to this flop. $21 a piece, and here we go. So with my 10s, I get to see a flop against someone who I think has a very strong hand. And the flop comes 8-7-deuce, rainbow. Pretty good flop for pocket 10s. It's checked around to the player who made it $21. As you can see, his chips are still in his rack. He takes out $75 and seems to put them in the pot rather effortlessly. Player to my right ends up folding, and it's to me. Definitely don't have to think too long on this one. My hand is going straight into the muck. Pocket tens are no way good here, and it's just I'll be drawn to two cards at best. So I throw it in the muck. Player on my left ends up mucking, and the other player ends up saying that he had an overpair. So I see a lot of players who play hands like this, and because they have an overpair, they never fold. And it just costs them tons and tons of money. So if you have a read that someone has a strong hand, and you don't flop a hand that can beat it, don't chase it. Just let it go. There'll be other hands to come. So I'm on the button. There was a couple limpers, and a player to my right uh, raises to 20. I got King Jack suited. I'm going to put in the call. Uh, the small blind also puts in the call, and so does one other player. So we're going four ways to this flop with uh, $86 in the center. Flop comes out king, queen, queen with one heart. 
gets checked around to the initial aggressor who decided to continue for a small size of $25. It seems like a fair amount to me. He could be betting just his entire range like this. He has a tendency to see bet at a high frequency. I put in a call and so does the player in the small blind. So the three of us are gonna see a turn card which comes in nine of clubs. So it completes the obvious straight draw. First player checks, my opponent who's the initial aggressor also check. And I decided I'm just gonna check this back. I'm not too worried about uh, giving a free card here. The river card comes as a six of clubs. Now the player in the small blind decides to bet out for $65. The initial aggressor folds and now it's to me. Could he have a queen in this spot? Sure he could. Could he have turned a straight? Yeah, I guess he could have. But I have a very strong hand. If he doesn't have a queen or a straight, the only thing I'm really losing to is ace king. So it's more likely he's value owning himself. So I put in the call for the 65. He rolls over a king with a weaker kicker and my jack does play, so I take down this pot and uh, we got some uh, extra money headed our way. And what's a poker vlog without a pair of aces? I have a player to my right open for 15, I make it 45, everyone else folds, and he puts in the call for the 40, and I said 45, you gotta put, put another $5 in there. Yes, yeah, got, I got a $5 chip there. Put five more in there, come on. Yeah, there you go. So he puts in the call for the 45 and we head off to flop heads up, which comes jack three deuce, all diamonds. I do have the ace of diamonds, so that is wonderful. He checked it over to me. Now, there's a couple ways to play this. One, you can check it back and get a little trappy, or you can just bet and hope that someone has something like a king of diamonds or a queen of diamonds in their hand or a flopped up pair of jacks and thinks you're just betting to be betting. He does think about this for almost a full minute before finally uh, ended up unfolding, saying that he doesn't believe me, but he can't be calling uh, as light as he is. So I don't think I lost too much value. Maybe he would have took a stab at it if I checked it, but I'm happy just taking the pot down and having my opponent be uh, questioning his, uh, his read. The player to my right opens for a raise to $20. I have king nine suited, not the greatest hand, but I decided just to call because I have position. Big blind also puts in the call and we get rewarded with a flop of nine, nine deuce. Pretty good flop. Even better, the big blind decides to lead out into us for 25 whole dollars. The player to my right tanks for probably about 30 or 40 seconds before finally folding. Once he folds, I figure best option for me would be just to flat call. I guess I could put in a raise because I might raise with pocket pairs in this spot. The turn card comes as an ace of diamonds. My opponent in the big blind decides to lead again and again for a very small sizing of $25. Maybe just a feeler. I think that he probably has maybe a pocket pair. I was curious whether I have an ace or not. I decided just to put in the smooth call again. River card comes as a three of diamonds, so it does complete the backdoor flush. He fires again, this time for $35. Obviously, I'm gonna be raising here. I can't imagine he has backdoor diamonds. So I make it a smooth $100, and he quickly decides to muck his hand, and in doing so, he shows that he is mucking a ace. So I think he had a hand like ace deuce and was taking a stab on the flop and then made top pair and thinks he's out kicked. This was the last session of uh, 2022. Ended up playing for six hours, which is about my limit nowadays. And I ended up uh, booking a win of $110. It was a struggle all day long. Made some plays that I'm not too proud of. Others that I really like, some of them didn't work out and some of them did. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for joining me today and I uh, hope to see you next time. Until then, good luck at the tables and Happy New Year.